On the 5th of July 2009, a young man called Adam Rogers died and our lives changed forever. He was my brother. He was my friend. He was my son. Adam was on a night out with a group of friends in Blackburn back in the summer of 2009. We were having a great time. It was good to see Adam. We'd not seen him for ages. About 3 a.m. we sat outside on the benches and chatted. I teased Adam that it looked like he was wearing dad's socks and he laughed. Some of us were hungry, so I gave Adam a hug and we left to get food. Adam and his friends, Carl and Chris, didn't want anything to eat, so they stayed on the bench. There were other people around, including a group of teenagers. One of the girls in the group came over and sat behind Carl. He turned around and spoke to her. Another of the teenagers, a 16 year old boy, shouted at Carl to shut up and it nearly turned into a fight. Adam, Carl and Chris were sensible and walked away. The teenagers shouted insults at them as they left. The teenagers then set off in the same direction as Adam and his friends. The younger boy threw a large flower head at Adam's friend Carl and Carl reacted by spitting at him. Then the older teenagers came running over and one of them attacked Carl. When the 16 year old boy started to come towards the fight, Adam thought he was going to join in and put his arms out to stop him. Some people nearby saw what happened next. They said Adam was talking quietly to the boy when suddenly he turned around and punched Adam very hard in the face. Adam wasn't able to stop himself falling and his head hit the ground first. One of the girls shouted, good punch. The teenagers all ran off when two people who were walking past came over. We got a call to say Adam was on the floor and we thought he was joking around until we saw him. Carl had blood on his face and Chris had blood on his shirt. Adam was on the floor and I only knew it was him because of his socks. I knelt down next to him and stroked his hair. I kept talking to him and told him he was gonna be all right. Then the ambulance came and I could tell it was serious by looking at the paramedic's face. We were in Malta on holiday when we got a phone call early in the morning from our youngest son, Jamie. He said, it's Adam, he's been attacked. Then the doctor explained that Adam had serious brain injuries and asked us to get home as soon as we could. We flew home and went straight to see Adam in critical care at the hospital. Adam looked like he was just asleep and could wake up at any time, but he was on life support and was being kept alive by machines. After doing some tests, the doctors told us that Adam's brain had stopped working and that Adam was clinically dead. We were all really shocked. Everything had happened so quickly. We all went to see Adam and say our last goodbyes. Adam was registered as an organ donor and so we knew that he would have wanted to help other people after he had died. Later that night, the machines were turned off and the transplant team were able to give some of Adam's organs to other people who were very poorly. Five people were able to have life-changing transplants because of Adam. It's very hard to describe how we felt, but we knew that we had to find any positives we could to help us cope. Over the next few days, we decided to set up a charity as a tribute to Adam's memory and to help us to deal with how angry and sad we all felt. The boy who hit Adam didn't realize at first what he'd done, but later he went to the police to confess. Eight months later, he went to court and was sentenced to four years in prison for what he'd done to Adam. I kept having nightmares about what I'd seen. And for a long time, we were scared to go out. We all blamed ourselves for not being there to help Adam. I will never forget that night. It was very difficult for us to accept Adam was gone. His football kit was still in his room smelling of him. His car was parked out at the back and his presence was all over the house. We all found it so hard. We still do. Finally, we want you to know more about Adam, Podge to his friends, and the kind of person he was. Those who knew him would agree that he was a good man, gentle, kind, loving, affectionate, reliable, funny, and always friendly. He was very special, not just for us, but also for his friends. 
I still ask myself how someone as nice as Adam could have been taken away from us like that. It seems so unfair. He never harmed anyone or had a bad word to say about anybody. He was always cheeky and happy. If you weren't feeling too great, he'd do daft things just to make you laugh, just so you'd feel better. He would have helped anyone in any way that he could. I miss him so much. We all do. I probably don't need to say this, but I'm really proud of my son Adam and the way he lived his life. Of course I miss him. I miss him more than I can say. But then, as Rachel says, we all do. We try to balance our sense of loss with precious memories of him and the things we did together. In that sense, he's still with us. <laughs>